if you like and wish to be alerted every time we release a new episode, please subscribe and like us. Thank you very much for following us. Hello, everybody, um, um, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Only some uh, technical information. Uh, please uh, write and send uh, your questions on the chat using the question and answer button on the left top. Uh, also, because of a uh, high number of participants, only speakers will be authorized to use the audio, uh, but you can, uh, uh, as I explained, send us the questions. We will answer them at the end of the webinar. And uh, a recording and PowerPoints will be sent uh, via email to all the participants, as well as a certificate uh, to all those who managed to uh, participate for the whole uh, webinar. So today's webinar is about the tuna industry and sustainability. Our special guest today is Angeles Claro Gomez. Good afternoon, uh, Angeles. Hello, good afternoon. She's a sustainability and we see program director at uh, Maria Aperto Realsa. Uh, uh, Next planned webinar is going to be a friend of the earth uh, webinar, but also interesting for sea people, for friend of sea people. It is going to be about uh, sustainable insects farming, case study Italian cricket farming. It is going to be held on the 21st of April at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Central Europe time. So my name is, is Paolo Brai and I'm founder and director of the World Sustainability Organization. I'm currently the director of the, also the director of the international uh, program of the Dolphin Safe project of the US NGO Earth Island Institute. WSO launched uh, Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth programs, uh, which are representing both uh, certification standards for sustainable products and services as well as a number of environmental conservation projects and campaigns. Over 1,000 companies from uh, more than 100 countries are products certified by, by, by these standards. So the word tuna, atun, atun, ton, ton, and its various common names derive from the ancient Greek word tino, which means rush, dart, dart along. In fact, tuna is among the fastest swimming pelagic fish. The yellowfin tuna, for example, is capable of speeds of up to 75 kilometers per hour, or 47 miles per hour. When you consider water is about 784 times denser than air, this turns out to be an absolutely phenomenal speed. And the underlying cause of their great speed was confirmed by scientists uh, to be because of their relatively warm blood. Tuna, opa, and some sharks are the only species of fish that can maintain a body temperature higher than that of the surrounding water. They take advantage of the waste uh, me metabolic heat released from their muscles to warm their blood and swimming muscles regions. This increases the rate of enzymatic reactions, gas exchange, and uh, transport in their bodies, which in turn allows them to swim at far faster speeds than many comparable fish. A tuna is a saltwater fish that belongs to the tribe uh, Tunini, a subgrouping of the Scombridae mackerel family. Tuna appeared on Earth about 56 million years ago. To put that in perspective, dinosaurs went extinct about 75 million years ago, and early humans' ancestors started walking on two legs about 4 million years ago. As you can see from this graph, the skipjack tunas are more closely related to the true tunas than are the slender tunas, the most primitive of the tunas. And the next nearest relative of the tunas are the bonitos of the tribe Sardini. The true tunas are those that belong to the genus Tinus. And here you see them. The genus Tinus is further classified into two subgenera. Tunus, Tunus, the bluefin group, including also Albacora, Tuna, and Big Eye. And Tunus, Neotunus, the yellowfin group, including Tongol, Tuna, and yellowfin Tuna. And the Tunini tribe also includes seven additional species of Tuna across four genera. They include the, the well-known Skipjack Tuna, Mackerel Tuna, and Frigate Tuna. 
And uh, here is a useful slide to help you identify the major tuna species and also avoid confusion with mackerel. And the sizes of tuna vary greatly, ranging from bullet tuna with maximum length of about 50 centimeters up to the Atlantic bluefin tuna with maximum length uh, up to 4.6 meters. The Atlantic bluefin averages two meters and is believed to live up to 50 years. To put the tuna fishery in perspective, let's first look at the trend in global fish captures according to the FAO's latest State of Fisheries report. The long-term trend in total global capture fisheries, as you can see, has been relatively stable since late 1980s, with catches generally fluctuating between 86 million tons and 93 million tons per year. However, in 2018, total global capture fisheries production reached the highest level ever recorded at 96.4 million tons an increase of 5.4% from the average of the previous three years. The, the increase in 2018 was mostly driven by marine capture fisheries, whose production increased from 81.2 million tons to 84.4 million tons. Most of the increase, as you can see, derived from the increased catches of anchoveta, from uh, 3 million or almost 4 million to 7 million, as you can see on top of this table. Once again, uh, who once again made it to, made it uh, the top species at, after relatively lower catches. Alaska Pollock was second at 3.4 million tons, while Skipjack Tuna ranked third for the ninth consecutive year at 3.2 million tons. So as far as tuna is concerned, as you can see, the two most fished uh, tuna species are skipjack tuna, representing about 4% of total marine catches, with the growing trend of more than 10% in the last five years in terms of catches, and yellowfin tuna, whose catches represent approximately 2% of total marine catches and having grown approximately 6% in the past five years. Generally speaking, I like to show this, this image to give a rough idea, uh, but of course, you know, the more detail than is needed. But generally speaking, one can say that around 60% of their marine catches end up as either fish meal and fish oil or fish finger, uh, fish and chips or uh, white fish products and, uh, and tuna, whether canned or frozen. In 2019, uh, the catch of major commercial tunas was about 5.3 million met uh, metric tons. 60% of it was skipjack, followed by yellowfin, 28%, big eye, 7%, and albacore, 4%. Bluefin tuna accounted for 1% of the global catch. But this has not always been this way, and skipjack catches, which uh, until the 80s have been almost equivalent to yellowfin catches, have then rapidly increased, as you can see. Even in more recent years, catches of other tunas have not changed much over the past 50 years. We're talking about albacore, uh, big eye, and bluefin. Now let's look at the actual uh, status of these uh, stocks. And um, most of the information here is provided by the ISSF, which uh, does a great job in updating about this data. So I want to you know, highlight the source. Across the seven species of major commercial oceanic tuna, 23 stocks are recognized for stock assessment and management. Six albacore, four big eye, four bluefin, five skipjack, and four yellowfin stocks. Globally, 65% of these stocks are at the healthy level of abundance of biomass. 13% are overfished and 22% are at an intermediate level. In terms of exploitation, the pie chart on the right, 74% of the stocks are not experiencing overfishing and 22% are experiencing overfishing. And uh, if we talk about catches, while before we were making an assessment on stocks, on the major stocks in terms of percentage, 
what we see is that in relation to catch, 87.6% of the total catch comes from healthy stocks in terms of abundance. This is due to the fact that skipjack stocks contribute more than one half of the global catch of tunas and they are in a relatively healthy situation. In contrast, one bluefin stock, one yellowfin stock and one big eye stocks are overfished, resulting that 9.6% of the total catch comes from overfished stocks. With regard to exploitation, the pie chart on the right, 86% of the total catches comes from stocks that are not experiencing overfishing. So we see some, also some good news, let's say, some improvements over the years. So this slide shows you the boundaries of the tuna RFMOs, the regional fisheries management, managing organizations, convention areas. And you can see on the right, them listed, IATTC, ICC, ICAT, or IOTC, WCPFC, and so on. And uh, in brackets, you can see the, the time they were, the year they were uh, founded. So you can see some have been there for many years, and this helped uh, collecting uh, very relevant, important information about uh, tuna stocks, the oldest one. The one that was founded uh, more many years ago was uh, the IATTC. And uh, all these uh, organizations, they uh, produce stock assessments periodically. And on the left, uh, you can see uh, when the next ones will be published and when the last one have been published. And on the right, you'll see uh, in which uh, month of the year the, their scientific committee meets to produce uh, um, further inputs and considerations about this, the state of the stock. And uh, the outcome is represented by the ISSF uh, by means of a color rating decision table, uh, which I, I believe is, is very effective, you know, to have a, a grasp of, of the situation. And, uh, the ISSF, the International Sustainable Seafood Foundation, uses this color rating system to represent the situation of the 23 assessed tuna stocks. Basically, green stands for a situation where the biomass is above recommended maximum sustainable yield and exploitation levels are below recommended maximum sustainable yield. So the perfect situation. And uh, <clears throat> yellow stands for adequate management measures, even though MSY is not respected. And red means MSY is not respected and management measures are not sufficient, according to the ISSF and, and to other assessments. And a similar coloring is proposed for bycatch on the other species generated by the various tuna fishing methods in the given stock. So this is the current situation um, with stocks divided according to the species based on ISSF's interpretation of the RFMOs data. As you can see, Skipjack is uh, best performing, all green basically, uh, we, followed by Albacore and Yellowfin, if we really want to make a hit parade, with the exception of the Indian Ocean Yellowfin stock. Big Eye's situation is best in the Western Pacific, while critical in the Atlantic and Indian Ocean. Bluefin tuna seems to be appropriately managed in all oceans, with the exception of the Pacific bluefin tuna. As far as bycatch is concerned, bluefin tuna fisheries are best performing. Also in consideration in the, of the fact, and this is my explanation, that this is mostly a ranching industry, fattening the tuna once it's caught alive. So obviously when you catch it alive, it's, let's say, relatively easier to, uh, you know, avoid the uh, uh, waste uh, uh, and bycatches, unwanted bycatch. And uh, generally speaking, albacore and bluefin tuna, mostly caught by hooks and long lines, have higher bycatch impact when confronted with yellowfin, which is mostly caught by poor seines and less on fats. Uh, of course, these are just generic considerations. I suggest everybody to go uh, to the ISSF website and uh, read more in detail the whole assessment. And uh, this table simply moves the 23 stocks evaluations and colors under each ocean. 
in the ocean seems to be the area most in need of management improvement, while the Western Pacific stands out as a well managed. And now let's look at the fishing gears and their potential impacts and uh, impact reduction measures. So focusing on uh, uh, bycatch issues, it is interesting to analyze the trend in fishing gears. Uh, while pollen line and long line were more leading, were leading to more catches until the 80s, the introduction of modern per seine vessels have dramatically increased catches generated by this fishing method. While pollen line, gill nets and long line catches have seen a reduction. Other fishing methods, including probably hand line or similar, have increased slightly. Per seine, as you can see, is mostly used for catching skipjack and yellowfin and increasingly big eye while albacore is mostly caught by long lines. So there are several uh, assessments of uh, fishing impacts on, on the environment, different fishing impacts. I, I show you some of them, but more or less the, the conclusion is, is, is similar uh, all, all through these uh, assessments. And, and, uh, and they conclude uh, uh, that uh, per seining, most common among tuna catching methods, is among uh, the lowest impact fishing methods. Similar conclusions for pollen line. Long line instead normally is higher up on the list due to its highest levels of bycatch, which needs improvement measures. You see similar result in this table and in this table. It's interesting to note also that in terms of fuel efficiency, per seining is second only to a hand harvesting, estimated on this EU study to be around 20 to 130 liters per metric ton. This is because it, it, uh, it deploys the nets only when, when the, the, the school of tuna is found, and so differently from uh, uh, dredging or bottom trolling or trolling or even long lines, the the fishing gear is deployed only uh, for a short period of time and it's not dragged through the through the sea and through the seabed in some time. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, while purse seiners are normally more selective than other fishing gears, on average catching 95% of tuna and some 4% of mahi-mahi or a, a retradable uh, fish, which normally is not among the overexploited ones. Uh, the extent of their use and long line use in the oceans for tuna fishing is having a relevant impact on some bycoat species, namely sharks and turtles. And some important progress has been made in uh, reducing turtle and uh, sharks interaction in per seine fishing fisheries by improving fish aggregating devices. In particular, by introducing non entangling fads, which do not use old nets, but instead ropes or canvas to prevent entanglement of turtles and sharks. Fad use is authorized according to the friend of the seas requirements for certification, as long as a census is provided and non-entangling fads are used, as well as other requirements. However, to respond to market requests, Friend of the Sea also can organize audits to verify that tuna is caught without fads, resulting in a fad-free certificate. Experiments uh, suggest that circle hooks are effective at reducing captures of uh, hard-shell turtles in long liners because they're wider at, at their narrowest point than J-hooks and tuna hooks. Therefore, they are too wide to fit into the mouth of a sea turtle. So according to a recent study by NOAA, encounters with leatherback and loggerhead turtles were reduced by 65 and 90 percent by switching from traditional hook to circle hooks. It's more difficult to reduce bycatches of sharks in long liners. WSO, Friend of the Sea, authorizes long line fisheries, certified as Friend of the Sea, to also use the Turtle Safe Registra Register logo uh, as 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 uh, the the fishery has to implement circle hooks, we we've talked about impacts of the tuna industry, but uh, the tuna industry is made also of uh, hundreds, if not if not thousands, of processing plants worldwide, 
And these have, in recent years, developed fish meal production plants beside the processing plant in order to reuse the waste generated uh, to produce fish meal, then sold globally for fish feed production. This change has led to an important increase, as you can see from these graphs, uh, in share of fish meal from fish residues. Uh, now almost 50% of total fish meal production and one third of it coming from uh, uh, fisheries byproducts during processing. And, uh, and uh, most of them are from tuna processing. An important optimization in the use of resources, which leads to reduced pressure on forage fisheries and decrease in waste production from the tuna plants. And let's get to the certifications uh, very shortly in my last few slides. The Earth Island Institute launched back in the 90s the first campaign to make the tuna industry aware of its potential impact on the ecosystem and in particular on dolphins. Seven million dolphins have died since the 50s in the eastern tropical Pacific. Over the years, many more companies joined and currently almost the entirety of the tuna industry participates to the program, opening up their facilities and vessels to monitor from the Earth Island. Over 500 audits are carried out every year and observers are deployed on board in some areas, while in other areas, the Earth Island relies on international observers and uh, CCTVs, which will likely become uh, more and more uh, um, necessary in order to uh, monitor continuously the fishing activity. The Earth Island program managed to reduce dolphin mortality together with the collaboration of the industries, other NGOs and the RFMOs in the area by 98%, from the initial 100,000 dolphins to the current 1,000, 1,500. The Dolphin Safe program has been the precursor of the sustainable seafood movement, which led to the creation of uh, two major certification programs, uh, MSC and uh, Friend of the Sea, uh, which are basically the only one uh, um, auditing continuously and certifying tuna products. Currently, the, the a study commissioned uh, by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development standard for the blue economy concluded in 2016, and we need an update on this, that Friend of the Sea has certified 1,100,000 metric tons of tuna origin, equally skipjack and yellowfin, while MSC has certified uh, mostly skipjack fisheries for a total of 723,000 metric tons. Just a few, just one slide on the Friend of the Sea certification. Uh, its requirements distinguish from other standards requirements uh, uh, for tuna on several points. For example, only friend of the sea can verify also tuna from ranching as it has developed sustainable aquaculture requirements. We certify also aquaculture production. It also, of course, includes uh, appropriate management requirements, including alternative mandatory presence of onboard observers or CCTVs. Bycatch reduction measures have to be in place. The company must comply with the dolphin safe and turtle safe requirements, and it can thus use both the dolphin safe and turtle safe logos. Fads are allowed as long as they are well managed and not entangling. Friend of the Sea is the only standard incorporating also social accountability requirements to regulate crews and processing line workers' treatment. <clears throat> Waste management is taken into account to reduce also ghost fishing. And uh, last but not least, Friend of the Sea is the only certification program which dedicates 25% of its revenue to support marine and land species and habitat conservation programs and campaigns. This is the, the list of tuna companies which have Friend of the Sea certified products worldwide. For more updated list of companies, vessels, fisheries, please use the links on the right. For more information, you can always contact me via email, Skype, WhatsApp. Uh, before passing the microphone over to Angeles Car Claro Gomez, Sustainability and WC Program Director of uh, Maria Perto Gelsa, let me show you today's poll. I'm moving back to the screen. I will stop screen share. I will just show you the poll. The, the poll is to make today's meeting a bit more interactive and hopefully to wake up those who have fallen asleep after my presentation. So the question is, which of the following fishing methods, fisheries, you judge having highest impact on the environment? 
So you can click only on one of them and uh, and we see the answers at the end. I will share the answers only at the end so you don't get influenced by others. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, uh, Angeles, for um, your patient in patience in waiting me. I'm passing now the session control over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thanks, Paolo. I'm going to to um, to share my my screen. So um, I am going to do my presentation uh, talking about um, uh, who we are and uh, where we are. Then I will. I am going to explain what we do in sustainability, and finally, I am going to explain how to um, uh, we transfer the sustainability values into our brand Mariaperto, that's our, our brand in, in Italy. So, next one, please. Uh, Healsa is the company that uh, this, is behind Mariaperto. Healsa is a Spanish uh, family business that was founded in 1958. And that uh, at that moment, the, the company was focused on producing and marketing uh, canned fish and shellfish. Uh, we, we had at that moment only one line of activity. But now, after more than 60 years, and thanks to the uh, innovation and the diversification, uh, we, can, we are one of the main producers worldwide. And we have four, next, please. And we have uh, four lines of activities, and the company is divided in several societies. The food is, the, is still the, the core business of the company. But we also have activity in the pet, to, pet food sector, the fisheries and services, and also in the valorization services. And uh, all, the, all the activities are based in the circularity. And all the activities has a um, 360 degrees vision in terms of sustainability. In the next slide uh, in, uh, are the places where we, where we are uh, worldwide. No? We have a... Uh, uh, factories in Europe and in South America. We have also um, commercial offices uh, around different in different countries of Europe and, and LATAM. Also, we have two fishing vessels, two persainers in the Atlantic Ocean, and we have um, energy. We have uh, wind farms in Spain and Chile. Next, please. And if we pass to the um, to the corporate social responsibility program. To, to, if we pass to explain what we do in sustainability, we see is the the next. <laughs> okay, thank you. We see is the corporate social responsibility program of Healsa, and here we include all the actions, initiatives, efforts, investment that we do uh, in favor of the sustainability. And we see is a commitment that involves the whole corporation. Uh, what, what the uh, okay? We see is divided in five pillars. The first one is the responsible fishing and purchasing. The second is the quality policies. The third pillar is the green energies and the environment. The fourth one is the social responsibility. And the, and the last, but one of the most important, is the circular economy. If we pass uh, briefly through each pillar, the first one, the, sus the sustainable and responsible fishing and purchasing, in this pillar, we include all the actions taken by the company to ensure that the raw material comes from responsible sources, so uh, that means sustainable sources and legal sources. Legal means not IUU fishing activities. And here are some of the collaborations that we established for giving some example, we collaborate with Friend of the Sea at two levels because our factories are embedded in chain of custody to be able to produce products with the Friend of the Sea logo and also at the level of a fleet because the fishing vessels also are, are audited under this standard. And we also have included the Friend of the Sea requirement in our sourcing policy. Another collaboration, for example, is with ISSF. We are a a full member of ISSF since 2010, and we are in full compliance all of the requirements. We also collaborate with MSC, also at two levels, at factory level for producing products with the MSC logo, and also at fishing level, because we got the certification, MSC certification for the catches of fat-free yellowfin in the Atlantic Ocean, and we are working to, to certify the skipjack catches. 
We also collaborate with Global Ghost Gear Initiative, International Polar Line Foundation, Sustainable Fisheries Partnership, etc. Next one, please. And this pillar is the quality policies. And here are incorporated all the requirements that the raw material must achieve to be able to guarantee that the, our products have the highest standards in terms of quality and food safety. Uh, we are certified under international standards like uh, IFS, BRC. We also are certified under ISO 9001, etc. Next one. The third pillar is the energy and the environment. Healsa owns uh, wind farms in Chile and in Spain. And with the green energy created with, with these uh, wind farms, we can say that our production centers are carbon neutral. At the same time, we are working in the in the taking care of the environmental. Since our origin, we always we always work for minimizing the impact of our activity on the environment. We are certified under the standard for uh, fourteen thousand and one, and also we have an integrated environmental authorization. The next. The fourth pillar is the social compromise. And here we divide the pillar into, in two groups. One group is for the workers and the other group is for the, uh, the social policy. When we talk about workers, we talk about in general, uh, in, in workers in general, our workers and also the workers of our suppliers, the workers present in the value chain. Uh, talking about our own workers, we have to work to, to guarantee that the, the factories are safe places and we, we do it uh, through the OSHA certification. And at the same time, we are involved in the ethical business through the CEDES platform and we are also audited as meta. For, uh, for the workers of the suppliers, we are working with the suppliers, requiring them to guarantee the, the human rights and the workers' rights along the whole value chain. Okay. The social policy, we have, in, we have three lines of activity. One line is with the children. The second line of activity works with people that have a different abilities and are in a, at risk of social exclusion. And the third, the third line of activity is involved with uh, promoting the um, sports and the healthy habits. No? Uh, and here it's possible to see different collaborations. For example, we collaborate with Red Cross, we, we donate uh, food and pet food for different, to different organizations. We are working in a, in a, um, in a program to, for vaccination, the children in development countries, etc. And we, if we go to the to the five pillar, that is the circular economy, we have created, Hialsa has created um, a business structure based on the circularity. Uh, we have different companies inside the group that led us to use the 100% of the raw material that arrived to our factories. We can produce food. Uh, for human, we can produce food for pet food, we can, for pets, we can produce fish meal and fish oil, and also uh, we can produce another products with applications in different sectors, like uh, the cosmetics, like the pharmaceutical, the chemicals, or even in the fishing sector. And at, the, at this level, we, are, we can say that the, the whole raw material is used. Okay? So, uh, after this brief explanation about our program, we can have an idea about uh, about how is uh, is the our activity. You no, know? because the program is uh, give us a vision, uh, a total vision of the sustainability, and also is affecting to the whole lines of activity of the company our, and all the departments. And now, if we, I am going to explain how we transfer all this work in sustainability into uh, one of our brands, our brand Mariaperto, that is in, our brand in Italy. If we went to the next, Paolo, the next one. The next, please. Okay, thank you. Mariaperto uh, is our brand in, in Italy, and um, uh, our, this brand was founded, uh, this company was founded in 2000, and now it's the first canned tuna brand in the Italian market with a 100% responsible approach. We are committed with the sustainability across the entire product range. All the products are sustainable, okay? When we, next, please. 
when we talk about uh, can product, we have different parts. No? We have the fish, we have the cans, we have the packaging, we have the another ingredients. If we uh, analyze each one of these, starting for the raw material for the fish, we can say that we use the hundred percent of the of the fish. So we have zero waste at this level. And here it's possible to see how how we divide the one fish. Uh, 45 of tuna goes for the human food. Uh, 32.5 is used for producing fish meal and fish oil. 2.5 goes for uh, pet food. And the other 20% per, uh, goes to different ingredients with different applica applications. Okay, apart from the total use of the raw material, the raw material, of course, came from sustainable sources. It's Poland Line, it's uh, MSC certified or for Friend of the Sea certified. The next component is our, please, next. The next component of one uh, canned tuna product are the cans. Uh, of course, the cans can be recycled. And also the, the, the materials we use in the, in the cans, recycled materials. If we talk about the tin plate containers, they are produced with a 58% of component recycled. And, and for the aluminium containers, the percentage, percentage is 63. The next, the next, please. If we pass to the boxes and, and cases, of course, can be recycled and also are produced with recycled materials. In the case of the boxes, the 94, almost the total boxes, are produced with recycled carton. And the 65% is for the cases. All the products are plastic free, so we don't use any kind of plastics in our packaging. And all the products are use uh, paper or carton uh, FSC certified. Uh, we also use the packaging for giving information to the consumer. In the, in the sites, in these sites, uh, we give information about the program, about the WC program, and in the central part of the packaging, we give information about the, the product. For example, the fishing method, the uh, attributes of uh, healthy, uh, or attributes for the, um, um, avoiding the, the food waste, etc. And finally, another ingredient, there's another part, next one, please. Another ingredient of the one tuna can, but we can think uh, in the, on the oil, on the spring water or salt, there's another ingredient because we only use natural ingredients. 100% of the products included in our cans are natural. We don't add additives or artificial ingredients. And we, we use uh, organic ingredients and also premium ingredients like uh, bio, bio oil or uh, some kind of uh, premium salt. At the same time, we are using the, the concept of just the right amount. That means the right, this, this concept has um, two, two objectives. One is to avoid the food waste, but the other objective is to avoid the contamination. Because if you put the oil, if you remove the oil, this oil can, can finish in, a, in the water. And it's a, just adding the, the, the right amount avoids this, this problem also. And just for finalizing, for finishing my, my presentation, the next one, please. I have included here uh, some milestones. Um, for example, in, in the last year, uh, we, we had uh, more than 5,300 5, employees. We have presence in more, than 50, in more than 40 countries. We have participating in 70 initiatives. We are promoting the female employment because the 70% of our workers are women. And all of these activities that we are developing are totally committed to the sustainable development goals. We have identified from the 17 goals, we have identified a direct contribution to 15 of them. And we will be working on this. We will, we will still working in getting a better percentage of recycled materials. Our, our objective is to, to get the zero waste not only in the tuna, even in the rest of the materials we, we produce and we manage. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Angeles, for... I was really impressed by your presentation. And uh, to my mind, it, 
I, I go back to maybe 30 years ago when I first visited Galicia and uh, yours was one of the first companies that I visited uh, and uh, how things have changed, uh, at least for some companies like yours which have uh, already since uh, several years fully understood the need for a global approach to the issue of environmental and social impact uh, and uh, this presentation uh, and, and the things that you have done over the years that you have described uh, really show how your company has now uh this type of approach uh, a, a global holistic comprehensive approach which uh, which looks into each potential impact incredible things that you, that you have you know uh, also thought about like uh, reducing the potential waste uh, from from the oil that you put in the in the can so that it's just the right amount and uh, how you try also to reduce the the impact of the packaging and all the social initiatives that you have carried out it's it's really impressive you know i i was of course aware of the initiatives in uh, sustainable fishing and involvement in all the different programs uh, but uh, this this uh, update uh, has been really useful also for me and i hope also for our uh, listeners today so now I will uh, check if uh, we have some um, uh, questions or comments uh, and then, uh, okay, so um, do these products have into account the tuna welfare during slaughter? Are humane methods applied? I do not think that the line or pole uh, Polar line fishing are humane methods. Are the origin of tuna showed in the product uh, or if it comes from farmed or wild tuna? Okay, so I, I let uh, Angeles provide her answer yeah. to this. And also, I would like to make some comments uh, in regard uh, after your answer. No, no. The 100% of the tuna we produce is, uh, is wild caught. Is uh, we don't. I think I, tuna is not apart from the blue bluefin tuna that is not a species used in the in the can uh, sector. Uh, the rest is is wild. So 100% of the tuna we produce is is wild. And the um, fishing methods we use several fishing methods. We use pole and line. There is human because it's somebody with a, with a pole, and also the the per se. This is the two one that we use. Wonderful. Well. Uh... I have some additional comments there. Um, uh, you know that uh, more and more studies have shown how fish are sentient and they have so social life. Very interesting books came out about this. And uh, there's a lot going on in uh, aquaculture, in farming in general, not only for tuna, but for all the species to try and understand uh, which is the best way to go to um, improve the fish welfare, basically. And so, for example, uh, in the past uh, two years, Friend of the Sea, together with uh, Fair Fish, an NGO focused on uh, fish welfare, and thanks to the funding of um, Open Philanthropy uh, in the US, managed to carry out um, a gap analysis at uh, all the friend of the sea certified aquaculture plants around the globe for the different species with some exception like mussels and shrimps which maybe will be the subject of uh, future analysis and from these we have uh, developed uh, uh, fish welfare requirements uh, a great number of them uh, differentiated by species which have been uh, proposed as integration to our new version of the aquaculture uh, checklist, certification checklist. This is under the final voting of the technical committee. And uh, this will mean that uh, very soon uh, our certification will, uh, which already included some uh, basic fish welfare requirements, will include uh, a much more detailed uh, number of uh, fish welfare requirements for aquaculture 
And uh, we are, uh, I cannot provide details, but we are moving in the same direction to start a um, many years study on, uh, uh, on the situation in fisheries, because of course in the, in the fishing phase when uh, the, the, the fish is, is killed or in the case of, uh, of, uh, of bluefin is uh, brought to a fattening area, um there can be ways to reduce the, uh, the to improve the fish welfare and the humane slaughtering in these uh, last phases of the fish life um reduce the, the time that it's held in the hooks or um you know provide a, a more humane slaughtering as it's uh, through the same process which um, farming of land animals have uh, gone through in recent years and I think that's uh, all for the best and I really hope that uh, yeah, as vessels and the other vessels will participate to this it's too early right now to to come to conclusions there are some studies carried out but I don't think uh, I am qualified I'm not qualified to ex make any specific uh, expressions or consideration in in regard but I think, you know, in, in the next few years, the, the question that we receive today will be the focus of uh, further improvements also in the tuna industry. So let's go to uh, another question, see if we have. There's somebody congratulating with uh, Angeles uh, for the work on education and for the just uh, the right amount policy. <laughs> So what's your, we have a question, what is your opinion in regard to WWF organization and their assessment? I believe it is the most uh, strict uh, assessment. So I think, uh, um, I don't know if Angeles wants to answer, but I think it refers uh, to the fact that WWF has uh, some, uh, um, produced over the years in the different countries, uh, some guidelines, uh, for uh, sustainable seafood. Uh, sometimes uh, I think, I'm not sure if they still have these with uh, kind of traffic lights, uh, information and so. Mm. Well, my opinion about WWF is positive because uh, in fact, WWF is uh, one of the partners that we have in ISSF. ISSF is composed by WWF, the science scientists, and the companies. No? My, my opinion is positive. I think regarding this assessment, I think maybe sometimes it should be more clear to avoid the confusion. Because just with the, with the summary, sometimes uh, my experience is we receive some questions from customers uh, asking things just for not reading deeper these, these reports. Should be, they should be sometimes more clear. Yes, I kind of uh, share your opinion, Angeles. Uh, I think uh, it's always important to uh, provide additional information and, uh, and then uh, consequently make also some uh, generic uh, conclusion uh, or op provide some opinion about um, uh, the um, different uh, uh, species uh, sold as seafood and uh, whether generically they can be uh, considered to be coming uh, from um, lower impact origin and so on. Uh, the, the problem with these uh, assessment and guides uh, are that the, the uh, conclusions are drawn mainly from um, desktop analysis uh, and uh, they don't go case by case, company by company. And uh, this is necessary. We have, um, you know, through the years uh, realized this. Uh, this is necessary. This is why we believe that uh, third party certification supervised by the national accreditation bodies like Friend of the Sea with on site audit and surveillances on a company by company basis is essential to be able to draw some level of conclusion to provide some indication to the consumers. Uh, you cannot really uh, produce a final conclusion uh, uh, without risking to mislead the consumer by making a generic assessment uh, or saying salmon is bad or uh, 
or uh, Chuna is good or uh, whatever. So you need to go on a case by case. That's much much more useful for for um, consumers. So we have another yeah. question and. Uh, how is proceeding the friend of the sea tuna certification do you think an important increase is possible thanks well uh, i will answer to this <clears throat> as i have shown uh, in in terms of um, metric ton certified uh, uh, we are the number one certification worldwide for tuna too so uh, obviously um, not everything can be certified there are some fisheries that we have uh, audited such as long line in um, for example in 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 asia in the pacific uh, where we found uh, unacceptable uh, crew conditions uh, almost uh, slave labor even uh, from from major brands major companies and so on uh, crew being kept for more than one year at sea and so there are certain issues uh, in particular uh, from from these long liners and of course one cannot should not generalize and that's why we need uh, um, an assessment uh, case by case we did certify some uh, long lines in ecuador where regulations are stricter and and also in uh, i believe in chile and south america or uh, from from spain and so on so uh, that's a, a good part of the of the origin, which cannot uh, always be certified. But of course, we are open. We are open, and uh, and audits are authorized. Audits are carried out by independent third party certification bodies. So that it's their conclusion. So any company from that origin interested uh, can apply. And. Uh, as far as per saying, there are some um, limitations due to also some level of over over exploitation, and, uh, and 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 so it's also up to the market uh, to uh, make a request. And so, if, if the person asking is is coming, for example, from retail chains, uh, buyers surely can play a very important role in in trying to convince suppliers to get on board. We have some other question. <clears throat> There's a question. Uh, what is your opinion about, again, WWF organization? We already answered. And their classification of FAO areas. I I, I think either you, you try and reformulate the question, or I think it's hard for me and Angeles to reply, because uh, FAO areas come from the FAO. And, and so. Or Angeles, do you have anything to add to this? Or while well, we no, wait no, for a clarification. I don't understand the question. Yeah. And uh, how did you manage to keep your demand when in crisis like COVID, the people look for food and if cheaper, the better for a lot of consumers? Doing what you do makes good products, but more expensive ones. I think we can both answer. I, I'll let you answer first, Angeles. Uh, what's the situation from the market? and what's the COVID impact? I did the uh, webinar on this, um, but the COVID, uh, the, the COVID was a challenge for us, but in terms of uh, everything, because we have to reorganize everything in inside the factories, first to, to, to keep our workers safe, because uh, we have to change the process inside, we have to change the entrance, we have to change the places where we where we rest, everything, no? but uh, we have to we work because we are an essential industry and uh, the demand increase and we have to, to produce to attend that demand, but the prices didn't increase. We didn't increase the prices during the, the pandemic. I don't know if this one is the question because, but uh, we didn't increase the, the the prices. We just produce, attending the demand, and also thinking in the workers, thinking to preserve, to to maintain the workers safe. Yes, and generally speaking, uh, I've been more in detail on this on a, another webinar from Infofish. Uh, the canning sector has not uh, has had well, basically a, a beneficial. Uh, um, Re market return uh, uh, from the COVID, in particular on the first months where people were rushing to buy canned products in general. 
and uh, apparently th there's no um, evidence, real evidence of overall impact uh, through this year and a half, couple of years. And uh, with the, while the frozen uh, tuna and the, those, all those seafood which go to restaurants, obviously, and to hotels uh, has seen a reduction, not so much in terms of uh, production and harvesting, but in terms of sales. And of course, some stocks have grown and they might uh, um, be delivered uh, later on. Yeah, in terms of, of sales, we had an increase around 11, 11% compared with the previous year. Okay, I see. So exactly, that's, that's confirming the information I had found. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> as far as, as the certification, because the question could be, refer to the certification itself. Yes, we were a bit concerned uh, initially uh, in the early months, but then what we saw is that uh, um, the, the, the market crisis problem, let's say the, the reduced economy uh, situation has somehow been compensated by an increasing concern uh, from uh, companies themselves and consumers uh, to towards uh, sustainability issues, environmental impact issues. So actually, our uh, uh, the level of interest around our certification and the other standards that we propose has grown uh, in uh, in this uh, year of COVID. And uh, I don't think this affected in terms of cost in general. The the cost of our certification is. Uh, let's say, so much um, based on uh, company revenue and uh, definitely accessible and does not impact the final price because we don't, the royalties don't apply to the sales, are not proportional to the sales. <clears throat> so what do you think about FAD equipment? Angeles, maybe you want to tell us what's your experience on this? No, we are, I, I think the fats must be well managed. Uh, we have some requirements regarding fats. For example, we only accept non-entangling fats. And also we are doing a, a change on the design, design of the fats to, to put a material, biodegradable material. So uh, I am not against on fats, but I think the gains must be well managed uh, in terms of design and in terms of uh, um, procedures to be able to to recuperate the fats if the if the fat is lost, things like that. But in terms of a carbon footprint, for example, it's more efficient to fish with fats than without. So uh, all fishing method has uh, good points and, and negative points. It's, it's difficult to say that the, which one is better. Because, for example, when we think about uh, pollen line, Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's very common to think that the pollen line is, is the best fishing method, and it's used to think that the, there is no bycatch uh, related. No, but it's not true because most of the uh, pollen line is caught with another species as a, as a bait. So that uh, that bycatch must be measured. So it's the same when we talk about fats. Fats in general, it's not possible to talk about fats in general. The fats must be well managed, must, must be uh, well designed. And uh, as soon as uh, there are uh, materials in the market, because it's something that must be developed, must be introduced in the design, biodegradable materials. This is the, the future. Yes, uh, Angeles, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. I completely share your view and I already expressed myself during the presentation. And we have a lot of questions, so I'll just move on. There's one a bit uh, somehow tricky, difficult to understand or appreciate because I, I think there are some imprecision. The potential human slaughter methods for tuna are shooting, spiking and coring, not per se. And these ones need to be done by very trained staff because they have a lot of risks not to be performed correctly. Well, I think this is not true, so I will just move on because I, I don't know, Angeles, I think it's a bit, uh, these are not the main uh, ways of killing tuna. No. So we cannot answer to that. I'm sorry. Can you suggest the best fishing ban period in India government of fisheries makes 
fishing ban period in between April to May. It is also to avoid juvenile fish catch. This Angeles is a bit yes. technical. It's it's the request very difficult to reply this answer, this question, sorry. Well, it's quite complex. It refers to the Indian Ocean, which we have seen uh, uh, seems to, to have some issues in terms of um, appropriate management. Uh, so I think uh, this needs a bit more detailed uh, um, answers and we are open, we are, you know, through our scientific department to answer to you. Maybe you want to send us uh, your question via email. Thank you very much. What are, the currently, what are currently the most relevant data on sustainable tuna catches and everything related to them? Well, the... Um, I think the, I, my presentation somehow introduced the subject, but uh, again, uh, we are willing to, you know, go more in depth on this. If you need additional information, I think we can do it uh, on a separate, uh, on a separate uh, meeting. Uh, <clears throat> so somebody, I think, agrees on our answer on WWF assessments. What is your opinion on Indian canned tuna, mainly on its quality and sustainability? Well, I think uh, we have introduced the, the issue um, in, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, there, if you're talking about the, the specific uh, tuna coming from canneries in tuna, uh, sorry, in India, I, I don't think there are many canneries in India, as far as as I am, as I know. Most of it is is frozen, or maybe some part of it is uh, uh, for loins. Uh, there might be something for the internal market. Um, however, uh, uh, if you're talking more generally about the the Indian uh, tuna situation, again, we would have to go a bit more in depth. In general. Uh, some of the species are considered uh, overexploited, and uh, at least for some of the countries, the level of management is is not uh, appropriate, at least according to the ISSF and other assessments. So definitely, there is space for improvement. Is your tuna byproduct supplier need to be certified as well? Um, well, I can answer here. We, friend of the sea over the years has been the first uh, to certify tuna byproducts, uh, um, trying to incentivate the trade of these products and the production of these products uh, in a circular economy optic and, uh, and approach. And uh, we are glad to see those improvements over the years. And I remember the first times I used to visit the tuna companies that were no fish meal plants and then gradually at least the major ones have all built uh, fish meal plants which prove also to be effective and we yes we do as friend of the sea certify also fish meal uh, we are basically the the, the the certification of reference for sustainability in the fish meal and fish oil and omega-3 supplements uh, certification so uh, there is potential there are some requirements there is a preference for uh, fish meal coming from um, uh, from um, uh, uh, seafood processing activities. Uh, some studies which have gone through recently prove that this is actually the uh, lower impact, the lowest impact uh, way of producing the, the fish meal. So, uh, and, and then of course, everything has to be looked in, uh, in more detail, but yes, it's possible to certify. Are there any sustainable tuna farming projects except uh, bluefin tuna and is Healsa funding this type of research? Angeles? No, no, we are not participating in, in farming. All the tuna we buy is, is, is wild. Yes, in fact, most of the Farming activities are focused on bluefin tuna. On bluefin tuna, that is not uh, a species that we commercialize. Yes, there have been some researches, uh, sometimes successful, but not at the commercial level, as far as I am, yeah. I know, for yellowfin. Um, TFS cans shown in slides look attractive. What is the inner 
lacquer is it a natural material uh, i i am not the responsible of buying this kind of product this is a technical question but uh, if they if, if this person can send me an email with uh, the question i will i will forward the email to the responsible person and, and give a, a reply so a question that I was waiting for, uh, what do you think of the Seas Piracy movie? Do you agree with the fact that controls are very difficult in the fishing industry? Um, <clears throat> the uh, Seas Piracy movie came out uh, about a week ago or so on Netflix and uh, um, as other documentaries had uh, done in the past, like uh, The End of the Line and so, and uh, chaos piracy it highlights the potential impacts of the um, uh, seafood industry in general fishing and aquaculture and also it it has uh, mm, uh, it has uh, uh, tried to to discredit uh, several uh, ngos activities which have been going on for years and helped uh, to um raise awareness on on all these issues that the documentary picks now after 30 years that they've been brought out and uh, and after 30 years that the industry has uh, like uh, companies like us have tried to work on uh, reducing this impact and um, and and so um the earth island institute and i i i i'm aware also the msc which was uh, uh, questioned uh, by the documentary, Friend of the Sea was not uh, mentioned or interviewed, um, did already provide an official reply, which is on their uh, website. And uh, as far as Air Thailand is concerned, uh, the what happened is that the filmmaker basically uh, reproduced only uh, part and selected the uh, uh, questions and answers uh, like uh, doing a puzzle and a collage of different uh, questions and different answers. Um, uh, our staff um, uh, confirmed uh, that uh, out at sea, uh, it's always difficult to have 100% um, assurance that um, what is declared and what the observers see, and sometimes even what the cameras, uh, the CCTVs see, is actually what what is going on but of course the whole industry is going for more and more transparency and uh, certifications like uh, uh, dolphin safe friend of the sea uh, do their best to request uh, and um, further monitoring mm -hmm. uh, we have motivated uh, some of the tuna major tuna fishing fleets to put in place uh, cctvs on board their vessels um, which uh, some years ago was something unthinkable, uh, unthinkable, and um, and, and uh, we requested the presence of observers, also of AZTI, in the, the Basque, uh, the, the Spanish uh, uh, Marine Research Institute, and um, and so we are improving together with the industry. I think the industry made some major improvements, at least some part of it. These documentaries are useful to raise again awareness, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes they are not so uh, objective. They are too subjective, and they try to uh, carry out their own uh, uh, strategy and um, way of thinking. So, and to to, to finally answer the question, uh, there's not 100% uh, assurance of um, what is going on in the high seas. But there are ways and new technologies which help uh, reducing the risk of uh, of uh, misbehavior. Um, a question for Angel Angeles: mm -hmm. uh, Do you think that European consumers will uh, increase the demand of sustainable sourced tuna, or continue to ask for conventional tuna as a cheaper as cheaper as possible? No, I think every time more and more people want to, to buy sustainable products, not only tuna, all kinds of products. They, they, there are a lot of studies about the, um, um, the, the demand in, in the market that they show that it's very clear that uh, every time people want to buy 
sustainable products for sustainable sources, not only sustainable in terms of raw material, even for sustainable in terms of social social issues. And uh, also the, the, the need of the information is, is bigger. Every time more people want to know what, uh, what is eating, what is buying, and is demanding information about the region, about the fishing method, method uh, it's, it's a reality. So, of course, the, the demand will, will be higher in the next years. Okay, thank you, Angeles. Then we have a question on uh, IATTC and dolphin fishing in the ETP. Uh, we don't have much time, but uh, the, the, the person is asking us what is the situation in that area. Well, the ITTC is reporting about the situation, and you will see that the dolphin mortality has decreased. However, other documentaries have shown that there is a very high risk of uh, bribery, especially in some countries which insist in uh, bribery of observers in some countries which uh, insist in uh, fishing on dolphins and um, however th 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 there's been an improvement we as dolphin safe do certify some origins from the area uh, as far as long as they provide uh, the uh, documental evidence from the official uh, international observers on board no other observers are are authorized on board those those vessels so uh, <clears throat> what is the realistic future of tuna consumption are we going in the right direction well that's a bit difficult to answer i think uh, yeah. that uh, <laughs> tuna consumption yes will go on for many years uh, and uh, we think we're going in the right direction i think angeles uh, and uh, Elsa Maria Perto would agree on that, right? This this question is related with the previous one. No, in, in, if we th if we think that uh, every time more people want to know uh, and want to buy the uh, a sustainable product, if if we think on that, it, we go in the right direction. It's, this is what I can say. Yes, I think uh, the areas of improvement. Uh, if I may, Angeles, could be uh, to put uh, stricter limits on the number of vessels authorized uh, to fish in a certain area, uh, limit to, you know, uh, introducing new vessels if the old ones are not uh, scratched uh, for real and not just passed to another country, mm -hmm. uh, to limit the overall uh, catches and to prevent uh, further growth. Um, so, uh, I think also that uh, more investment should be carried out in evaluating the actual ecosystem impact uh, because one thing is the maximum sustainable yield, which is uh, related mostly to the sustainability in the catches from the economic point of view. Uh, I think uh, there's a, a lot to could be said about the ecosystem impact by that has been caused, let's say, in general by fisheries in reducing so much the biomass, etc. And, uh, and some uh, RFMOs are going in that direction and, um, and uh, th there's been some improvement, some better regulations and so on. Uh, and, and this said, from the market point of view, I guess that uh, one should find a way, and it is often discussed at conferences, to, um, to pr give tuna a higher value in itself, you know, make consumers understand that it's really a high value product, uh, higher possibly than, than the value that is paid for now, but not in the terms of just rising the prices, but uh, giving value to that. And somehow this has occurred in some uh, markets. Yeah. And regarding the, the capacity, I think you comment, uh, Paolo, uh, we are members of ISSF and ISSF is an organization that is working on this. There is uh, some uh, requirements that uh, are, are, are some, some resolutions that uh, uh, don't let to build new vessels unless another one is, uh, is, uh, is destroyed or is uh, refurbished or so. Yes. Uh, uh, as a company, uh, we are in line with that. But I share your opinion regarding the regulations about the that the, sometimes the RFMOs are not uh, taking the proper measures, at least on time, because if the if the measure arrives later, maybe it's too late. 
Thank you, Angeles. And again, a new startup collaborate with your firm. Uh, if so, what is the procedure? Well, as far as Friend of the Sea, there is a procedure. Just drop us an email in our website in the company area under apply. You can find the forms that have to be filled out, but you can also contact us directly. There's a chat on the homepage and so on. And uh, you have also the email of Angeles. So eventually, if you want to propose some collaboration if that the question was about this uh, you can try and contact angeles and see mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, and then uh, last question and then we have to wrap up uh, to angeles how do you manage the traceability of byproducts in particular for the human use of them for example for cosmetics the traceability is the same as the fish because we buy the fish and we have total traceability from the fishing vessel till the final consumer. And for us, it, we don't difference if the final consumer is somebody that, that buys a camp product or a pet food product or a, 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 a pill with a fish oil or, or another product. We have the whole traceability because we know, uh, we know uh, which fishing vessel got that fish and we, con we control the traceability in the final, the final chain. We have a last question, last minute question. How significant and what magnitude of IUU fishing from a large fleets from China and or other countries affect the efforts of sustainability? Well, the EU uh, holds a um, very nice database on IUU fishing, which should not be confused with the generic uh, single infringements. So there are vessels which are put on IUU list. The EU list comes from the RFMOs, and a good part of them are uh, tuna vessels because tuna is also the most monitored uh, fishery uh, worldwide, and others are only just uh, starting. Uh, all these major RFMOs which I have introduced to you are almost an exclusivity of uh, the tuna species. There are normally no RFMOs for uh, specifically, let's say, for shrimps or for sole or for uh, sometimes even for cod and so on. There are generic ones. So there's a lot of uh, uh, assessment and monitoring going on for tuna. And uh, if you want the link to this list, you can contact us. And uh, this list uh, could uh, probably include also some vessels from China, but one cannot... Uh, uh, should not generalize. Of course, the Chinese tuna fleet uh, is a major one. And, uh, and uh, however, it is participating on some of the RFMOs. And uh, we really hope that over the years it um, will fully coordinate with all the other fleets. So I think uh, if Angeles doesn't have any additional comments on this one, we can... Uh, wrap up i just yeah. look at the polls at the poll that uh, went out and um, let's see okay so uh, most likely the at least from our public the bottom trolling uh, for hake fishing is considered to be the highest impact one and uh, and and then uh, well per sailing and shrimp shrimp trolling and gill nets and somehow long lines uh, are also the second choice. And uh, there's, there's this also idea that pollen line has a lower impact. So I leave it there for your thoughts. Of course, this is not friend of the sea conclusion. This is not uh, a Kealsa conclusion. I will just share the results with everybody. Uh, but it's, it's always interesting to see other people's opinion. And thank you very much for voting. And uh, Angeles. Thank you so much for your contribution today. Thank you to the whole uh, team, Maria Perto in Italy and uh, Kealsa. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for everybody for joining. It has been a, a great uh, webinar, I think. Uh, and thank you for all the wonderful questions. Let's be in touch and uh, see you all to the next webinar. We'll send you all the files and information and we'll update you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Subscribe to our channel to get more content about sustainability.